Alright guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick video. We had a very uh, long and uneventful break from hurricane season, so we are back at it. And we're going to talk about the predictions of hurricane season 2020 right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. So experts are saying that the hurricane season this year is going to be a little bit above average. They've been saying that for the last, I don't know, two or three years. But this year we're expecting a La Nina, which is not good for hurricanes. The Gulf waters are already warm as it is, uh, well above what they should be at this time of year. And we're going to go ahead and get into um, a... Um, weather.com video, if you will, uh, to, to start the, uh, the procedure here, or the, the video. Well, it is that time of year where we start to ramp up in looking at the forecast for the Atlantic hurricane season, right? And Colorado State University just came out with their forecast for this year. They're one of the premier forecasters for this type of thing, kind of the long-term outlook for Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, this year, what they're thinking is 16 total named storms, eight of those being hurricanes, and four of those being major hurricanes, meaning category three or higher. Now, compared to last year, it's actually pretty similar. We had 18 named storms last year, six hurricanes, three of those were major hurricanes. Here's the thing with this forecast that you have to keep in mind. It really doesn't matter all that much. It's kind of a pointless forecast because it only takes one, all right? You could have a year where you have 30 hurricanes, a lot of major hurricanes and they all stay out to sea but you could also have a year where you have only two hurricanes and one of them was major and one of them is a direct hit on miami so the point is these numbers really don't matter very much you've just got to be prepared for hurricane season if you live in one of those prone spots all right well there's that um and he's right you have to prepare for the worst and it doesn't matter um what the deal is or how many uh, tropical storms or anything like that that they're predicting, hurricanes, anything like that. What you need to worry about is that one that could hit you, all right? Um, pardon me. I am looking for the sea temperatures. Pardon me. Uh, it's been a while since we've been doing this, right? Um, here we go. Well, that's not really going to work. The sea temperatures, the lack of wind shear, and everything else is going to be a big, big player on how how many storms and where, of course, they're going to go. Um, dang, why isn't the... I think it's okay perfect uh, let me bring this back up so right now this is at basically five centimeters above the ground um, we're looking at very warm waters or very uh, warm temperatures right now. And that is pretty much everywhere. I mean, as you can see from, let me slide this over. Damn, this is a big world we live in, right? So typically, um, hurricanes like to come here and they roll across and they do, you know, whatever they want to do here, right? So we basically have this entire section that we need to be concerned about. And then you can see the temperatures are pretty warm already. And it's very early for that. I mean, even parts like uh, right here, we're looking at at least 80 degrees. You got 70 degrees here. Last year, if you remember, we were more in the 60, 50, you know, range here, you know, in this particular area right here. And 
we're much warmer now. And then, of course, we have, <clears throat> pardon me. Let's see. Thunderstorms, that's another thing that we have to really worry about. Uh, thunderstorms. Hurricanes are not the only thing that are producing severe weather, obviously. So as we're looking right now, we have some severe weather here. We have some severe weather up along the east coast of the United States. We have some severe weather here in the Caribbean Sea slash Atlantic Ocean. Uh, I mean, this is bad news bears, right? Um, so we, we're looking at a, uh, what I'm hoping is not an active season, but we are looking at probably the possibility of a very active season. And that could be a bad thing. There's already a lot of activity here in the southern hemisphere, hemisphere um, that, of course, right now is their summer. So the Pacific, I don't really focus on the Pacific because I'm not there. But, I mean, I guess I could try somewhat this year if people need that data. But what we're going to do this year is we're going to focus on any of the, the storms that are potentially hazardous to uh, the United States or residents of the United States. Uh, also, we're going to try and track all the storms, even if they mean nothing. Um, a lot of storms are predicted to kind of do really nothing. And that could just be the jet stream, the pressure, the wind shear, a whole lot of everything. So. Uh, what I'm seeing, and I don't follow a lot of the hypothetical um, predictions because a lot of them are wrong. I mean, there's one out there that predicted uh, Florida getting hit three times last year, and it didn't. So you have to be very careful with the hypotheticals that you're watching on the Internet. But a lot of these storms just typically do, you know, this. They just kind of go out, whatever, because as we discussed last year, a lot of it has to do with pressure systems, jet streams, and things like that and what is in the way or not in the way to determine its path of, of damage. Um, the ones that you don't want to see, let me change my color here to green. The ones you don't want to see are the ones that start here and work their way into the Gulf because they have a lot of range here to get, um, get bigger. Let me clear this again. So they have a lot of range to get bigger and when they go like this and they have a lot of uh, of room and time to strengthen depending upon how warm the uh, waters are let me pick a color that can be seen here in the Gulf of Mexico depending upon how warm the waters are that could also affect what's going to happen to any of these areas I've just outlined in pink now, the ones that come off the coast of Africa or even brew up in the uh, Caribbean Sea. So, like right here, we have a lot of thunderstorm activity. So, again, you get the right, uh, right patterns, the right conditions, a hurricane or a tropical storm can form. The ones that like to do this and follow along the um, Dominican Republic and Haiti and just kind of, you know, rub the coast, that's where you can get a lot of... Um, southern florida activity what i'm thinking um what i was reading was from a pretty credible source um and again this remains to be seen but we're going to focus back in on florida what i was reading what they were thinking was uh I'll go back to green here that this particular area Sorry, let me make it bigger. This particular area could see three potential tropical storms or hurricanes based on what they're evaluating. Now, it's really early right now to determine what that evaluation is going to be. We won't really actually start looking at it until May end of yeah probably the first part of May we're not really gonna start looking at it until at that point because while the waters are warm the conditions are right and I would not be surprised if we started to see a very early storm even if it's a tropical storm I would not be surprised at all if we saw something very early on and that is to me an indication that 
you know, it could be a very busy and active season. I am predicting that before May is up, we will see our first hurricane, meaning just classified as a hurricane, not necessarily making landfall anywhere in the United States. But I believe that before the end of May, we're going to see our first hurricane. I believe sometime mid-June to mid-July, we will see our first major hurricane. I'm still going to kind of run with Florida being impacted possibly between August and October. I have not paid for the Farmer's Almanac, so I don't have access to the, the whole long-term thing. Sadly, I can only see two months worth of um, what they're saying is going to happen. So let me bring that up real quick before we go. Because it could be uh, very um, useful information. Now, last year I did use the Farmer's Almanac for a lot of the predictions of, as to when the storms were going to be arriving. And for the most part, we were pretty right on with those numbers. So as we see here, it is sunny and warm, right? Here we go. go that's why you have to pay for things like this because you don't get the ads all right so as you can see we're here at this time and this is accurate so we have sunny and when this again is for Florida in general they haven't really specified Tampa Orlando whatever uh, but we're looking at Average temperature of 73 degrees, two, de two degrees above normal. Well, it's a lot hotter than that. May 1st to 11th, we're having scattered thunderstorms and warm. This is where it's going to start brewing right here. Another, uh, a lot of wet, a very wet May with the average temperature being 78 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and say 88 degrees. Um, but if you look at this, where they had predicted winter will be milder and drier than normal, the coldest temperatures being in mid and late January to early February and the second half of February, April and May will be hotter than normal. All right, so we already have experienced that. Um, they say summer will be slightly cooler and drier than normal, though a lot of people are predicting it will actually be hotter than normal, with the hottest periods in late June, mid-July, and mid-August. Watch for tropical storm threats in mid-June and mid to late July. September will be, and October will be warmer and drier than normal. Watch for hurricane threat in mid-September and a tropical storm threat in mid to late October. So there you have it. The Farmer's Almanac I go by um, quite, quite often because it is very accurate. It's about 80% accurate. So my predictions are we'll go ahead and go with the Weather Channel predictions of the, the amount of storms, the number of named storms, etc. We're going to go ahead and go with the, 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 the La Nina effect. We're going to go ahead and go with the extreme uh, severe weather in terms of thunderstorms and tornado activity in the United States. We have the warm waters in the Gulf. We have the lack of wind shear that they're predicting to be this year. So it could be a very busy and active season. That being said... You probably do want to go ahead and you probably do want to uh, get yourself stocked up as you can because you have plenty of time now. So a case of water here, a case of water there. I realize we're dealing with a whole nother uh, beast, which we can't see on YouTube. Uh, I realize that we're dealing with a lot of stuff right now. But get what you can get as you can get it. All right, guys, that's all I have for now. But, yep, I think we're in for a very busy, uh, active tropical storm season. That's all I got. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Yeah.